Hey guys, it's your humble host, or Akio if you prefer. So I'm back with another video, and there's something I want to touch upon. Um, something that was brought to my attention, and usually with the uh, I stand with Vic stuff, kick Vic stuff, um, Vic kicks back. Um, there's been a lot of coverage of like the Twitter wars and what's been going on and things like that. I'm not here to cover any type of Twitter war. Something was brought to my attention that was posted six days ago by Jesse Pridemore. Um, I wanted to address it, um, <laughs> seeing uh, the debate I just had with the shades and um, some of the stuff that I've tweeted out personally. So we're going to go through and read it. I'm not here to make fun. I'm not here to bash. Um, so let's begin. Uh, people who know me know that I grew up in foster care. It was very abusive, mentally, physically, sexually. My older sister abused me when I was very young. It was learned behavior. It trickled down. Most of my foster family treated me like I wasn't worth anyone's time. And I will say when it comes to foster care, I've heard many horror stories and how the children are just there so that family can get money. I know someone very close to me who has been through foster care and they said it was a nightmare. Um, they weren't treated like one of the family. Um, they were made to stay outside the house when the parent was gone, or parents, um, that they were fed uh, specific things that were really crappy. So it just, it, it's, I have yet to hear one good thing about foster care. I mean, I seriously have. Um, so, after all, who wants to waste energy on a kid that might not be there tomorrow? She was one of the few that was nice to me. She loved me. How could she know what she was doing to be wrong? We were caught. Since I was still a foster, we had to go to therapy. One day of it, it was not made clear to me that what she did was wrong, why it was wrong. The system failed us. Her, she's in prison now for child pornography. Some of that contained her own children. You equate sex with love. It's impossible to separate at times. Okay, so... Two things. Once again, I have not been through foster care personally myself, but the one counseling session does not make any sense to me. Depending on uh, who the agency was and things like that, I, I got to say that is the first red flag for me because if you catch one child sexually abusing another one um, and you do a one-day session, that, the place could have been that crappy, but I will say when it comes to children, especially with foster care, um, and just being messed with like that, I, that, that to me does not make any sense. And any of my viewers, I'm not asking you to dox yourselves, but it, if you guys who have been through this system and possibly through a similar situation as that, that, maybe you can share your experiences um and uh help clarify that for me just a bit in the comment section because to me that just uh uh even i know with foster care is no no there i don't know like i said it could have been a really bad system it, there are horror stories i've heard plenty like i just said i've heard really anything good come out of foster care story wise but that to me sounds a little bit weird and let me tell you upon the sex thing because I've also talked about this on my channel. So for those of you who are just joining me is I see sex as between a uh, husband and wife. I, I'm not for one night stands. I'm not for uh, uh, sex work. I think all of that is really unhealthy. Um, that's just me. Um, so when it comes to saying that you equate sex with love, it is it's a form of physical love when done in the proper environment and done the proper way. So let me bring up another point before y'all screech at me about this point is because I've heard this argument said before, oh, well, sex is set, sex. Well, if sex is set, sex, if it's not really anything important, then why um, is it so detrimental when it's forced upon somebody? Why is it so degrading when somebody is raped, um, somebody is messed with in that sort of way, a uh, child sexually abused, because it's a very intimate, very vulnerable thing, and it is supposed to be a very loving, intimate, vulnerable connection with your spouse and nothing more. So when it does get used um, in an improper way, when it does get mishandled and used to mistreat other people, it becomes this very dark and nasty and degrading thing. So, uh, and 
done with um, certain things because she puts it's impossible to separate at times. Um, I will say when it comes to certain things that before you can learn how to be physically intimate, you have to learn how to be emotionally intimate and vulnerable and have that connection. But that's a whole other can of worms. I just wanted to point that out there because sex is supposed to be part of that love, supposed to be a physical intimacy. But when it's misused, as it's being described in this uh, Twitter thread, it can turn into one of the most darkest, nastiest, degradiest uh, things ever happened to somebody. Um, let's continue on. When you're in that situation, you shut down. You want it to be over because facing the reality is so much harder than anything you could possibly imagine. You hit a wall between you and your voice. Um, and let me touch upon that too because I just talked about this in the debate with the shades. Um, me, and I've touched upon this as I have no repression of my own um, abuse or whatnot, and there's a reason why um, I'm not going to go into it here. It's a little bit too personal. Um, but when it comes to finding your voice, because again, it took me quite a few years to get my voice, um, and to actually learn how to talk about the situation properly. But here's the thing is I was practicing. Um, I do poetry, I do artwork. Um, for years, I was trying to work through it and granted the people I had tried to help me weren't the very best or they didn't know what they were doing so but because I've taken the time and it is a harsh reality to face because somebody like I said in the stream uh the other night yeah it was the other night um somebody took your person away somebody took your digging away your humanity and now you just, you feel disgusting. You feel like you're used goods. You feel like you're spent. Um, I'm probably projecting right now. <laughs> but, and you just don't see yourself as anything valuable. You kind of feel like you're a shell of the person who you might have been had that not happened to you. So, it can take time to get your voice, but you have to practice. You actually have to be willing to work with it and actually go through the motions. Like, yes, this happened to me. And it hurts. It really does. It it hurts like hell. Um, there's still some stuff, like I mentioned in the Shades debate the other night. Um, there's a sexual abuse help books that I bought. Yes, they're Christian-based. Dr. Dan Allender. Um, I come from a Christian background. I hate to put those things down because... I started to get really depressed and not because they weren't helping, but they actually started to bring stuff up and it's like, I can't do this by myself. So yes, it is a very hard walk, but you still have to do it. Uh, and as for wanting it to be over, yes, I will say, and I can attest to this in a way that your certain parts of you go numb. They just, they switch off because they don't want to think about it. They don't remember, they don't even want to re uh, register the physical memory of what happened the feeling the emotions behind it a lot of that shuts down i can relate to it and it really sucks because uh, it causes other problems later on down the road so it's not a fun time um and people can shut down in various ways so let's continue because i'm uh running out of uh time here uh let's see i found my biological father a few years ago he admitted to abusing me too uh, most women you know, have been abused in some way. Most before they are an adult. You think you know how someone should react uh, or in situations like this, but you have no idea. The trauma that lives with you controls you. You try to go to the police. They don't believe you. They ask what you're wearing, how you provoked it. Okay, so let me break this down because there's a lot in just like this itty bitty paragraph. Okay, so um, yes, everybody copes with their trauma differently. You have the introvert, you have the extrovert, you have the party girl. Um, oh, I wish I had that. I should have grabbed that damn book because it listed the um people how they react. But there's there's various reactions. Me, I am very much introvert. Um, so and I it was very distant as a kid. Um, I didn't like want to be touched or anything or even cuddled with because it's like, ooh, no, don't do it. Um, so and I'm not here to dictate, and I've said this on my channel before various times, is I'm not a medical professional. I'm not, uh, even as I don't even consider myself an authority on it, but at the same time, I do know how some of this process works, 
um, and in regards to actually dealing with it. And from what I'm seeing, because I did touch upon the Me Too movement in my stream very passionately the other night, is when it comes to being sexually abused, realistically speaking, a lot of victims, even when they find their voice, they we still don't want to talk about it because it's just we feel disgusting, and it's not like something it's not something we want people to know about us. Um, like I said, I've touched upon my channel here and there with my poetry and artwork and things like that, but outside of that, I really haven't gone into the details because number one, it's just I'm still trying to wrap my brain around what happened, why it happened, it just. A lot of sexual abuse victims detach from their own story. I know I do because it's like, they're, no, just tell me that's an exaggeration, a hyperbole, something. Um, that somebody blew something up out of proportion, but, you know, when faced with reality, it's just a lot of the time, it's, it is what it is. So, and I'm not trying to dictate, oh, you, you have to act this way. No, I just, the behavior, as I said, what I'm seeing is, all the screaming, the crying, you have uh, Jamie Markey, you have Monica Rouse saying, oh, I you pulled my hand off Survivor. No, no, you're not. Stop it. And I, and I touch upon it on Twitter, I'm going to touch upon it here. A survivor, especially of sexual abuse or rape, means that in your traumatic event, in your experience, what was happening to you, your tormentor or tormentors could have killed you, and either you survived the experience or you were um, shown mercy and not killed. Because a lot of the times, especially with rape, is you do have women who that happens to and they are killed right after. So that is a survivor. So quit calling yourself survivor because of a damn hair pulling. Or hugging too tight. You're not survivors. Stop it. Anyway, let's uh, continue on the police. Um, when you go to the police, they have to ask all the details so they can make the charge stick. Um, they ask all the details to make sure that they're going after the right person and guy. Um, they do ask what you're doing because, as I've said before on Twitter, when it comes to sexual abuse, and let me hear me out before you guys all screech at me. Yes, you, what happens to the person, that the victim, it is never their fault because they're overpowered, they're taken advantage of, they're messed with. However, is you do have to face the reality as a past victim, as a past uh, survivor, you do have to face the reality of how that circumstance came to be, whether or not you put yourself in a situation, once again, that does not make it your fault that somebody took advantage of you. What you're wearing does not make it your fault of how somebody took advantage of you or overpowered you or messed with you. But we can put ourselves into some dire situations or open the door, if you will, for that situation to occur. So when the police do a thorough investigation, as they should, like, okay, where were you? How did this start? So they can have all those elements there. Understand? So when they ask what you're wearing, that just it's all a part of that. Um, and that's the reality that we all have to face. It's not just, oh, well, uh, this is what happened to me. Okay. Um, did you put yourself in that situation? Again, not the victim's fault, but once again, opening that door for, for uh, something really bad to happen. Um, hopefully I phrased that right, because I really want to be careful with the way I just said that. <laughs> um, to the police officers, a rape kits are two-hour vagina exams, humiliating. The kit sits on the shelf with hundreds of thousands of other untested kits. Where are you getting your information from? Because as far as I know, rape kits, as soon as they are taken, um, they are then examined and added to the police report. Um, and rape kits, I've thankfully never had one done to me. Um, they are to document what damaged happened um, during the incident. So like I said, it's to make the charge stick even more and not have the predator or the suspect be able to wiggle away from that. That's why they're done. Um, you get slut shamed, it dresses in mud, I told it was your fault. Okay, 
But okay, you don't specify who's telling you things. The officers do not tell you that it's your fault you got raped. Um, the officers do not tell, don't slut shame you. And people who do are scumbags. I know that there's some stuff going on in Ireland right now, and it has to do with uh, young girls committing suicide because of the uh, underwear that they are wearing. This is an, you guys can go look this up. This is actually happening right now. Um, because I don't know what they're wearing that they asked for or they provoked it. It messed up shit. But here in America, for the most part, I've never heard anybody, police-wise, officer-wise, tell a rape victim it is your fault you got messed with. Um, and I'm trying to, and I say messed with because I don't want the video get removed. So and I, I'm not trying to like water the stuff down. I'm just, I'm trying to be careful with my wording so YouTube bots don't get me. This video is not monetized, but... You know how YouTube is. YouTube's busted. Um, so, let me touch upon this. You're a liar. You get death threats, rape threats. You're scared someone will find your address. You can't sleep. You can't function. You just cry reliving your trauma over and over as a bunch of strangers you never met tell you how you should have reacted. This is my first time being public with this. It's not up to you to decide how people react. And, okay, I, because I don't... I don't know, I, I, I highly doubt this is addressing me specifically, but yes, there's been a lot of criticism because your story, because you blocked me specifically, because when I explained some of the elements in your story did not make sense, especially when you said, oh, well, I woke up without my pants off after being blackout drunk, and I went to my ex, and you said your ex told you that you were raped. Uh-uh, that's not how that works. So the elements of your story do not add up. You try to throw Todd under the bus, which again, there's text messages that have debunked your entire story, and then you try to do the same, I believe, hair pulling shtick that all the uh, Jamie, Monica, some of these others have done with Vic, which Vic doesn't greet women like that. So, yes. Um, and the people who have asked you for information, here's the thing, and was it who pointed this out the other day? Because I've been watching a lot of uh, Vic Manana videos covering the situation. Somebody in their video pointed this out. And I can't remember if it was Super Saiyan Paul, Hirohi, um, Unreal Media, I believe that's the name of it. Um, pointed this out. It's like, if you are, when you have a story, especially a story like that, um, is you, d you don't have to. Uh, Try to remember all the details meaning is like you know what happened you have like for me with memory oppression i have because of the pieces that i've dug into from my past and from my cps file which i do have and the testimonies i have i have not exact memory but i have a very very strong idea of what happened and there's stuff um what's called bleeding memory whether through my poetry that some stuff has come out whether through dreams subconscious wise that it just gives me an idea so it's like so i can tell my story from a point but i don't have to go through and remember oh well what did i say here what did i say i don't have to do that and this is what you guys are coming across like when i confronted you and you try to like derail or deflect or try to say, oh, well, I got my stuff mixed up. It's like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I'm trying to ask you more detail because when you do put stuff out there, um, especially in the public, I'm not asking for the rape kit, lady. I'm asking, hey, do you have evidence? Because none of this stuff was ever taken to the police. The police aren't going to sit there and tell you, oh, well, it's your fault you're a slut. No, 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 no. Um, there's, no, there's something I will touch upon, and I'm going to be really careful, because, uh, when it comes to sex work, because I dug through some of your stuff a little, you're a little, anyway, um, I do understand that there's mistreatment of those type of women who do that line of work, um, with the police, because <laughs> they do that line of work, and I'm going to leave it at that. But that's the only circumstance I could see a possibility of that happening. Um, but otherwise than that, mm -mm. please take that very seriously. And that's where they dig as thorough with the rape kits, um, asking details of the situation. That is why they do that. Anyway, continuing on. I'm running out of time here. Um, to have any, okay, this is my first time being public with this. It's not up to you to decide how people react to have their autonomy taken away. 
um, show a little empathy, do better. I will go into glamour gowns. Let's want to donate my time to foster children to help them uh, getting fit into their prom dresses that are donated from designers so they can have one night of feeling normal. Um, and it will be impossible to not hug each other, every one of them, and tell them they are loved and deserve love and deserve love. Um, that I know what they are going through. You don't know our lives. You don't know us. You don't know how to uh, cycle abuse continues. Yes, I do. I do. My my freaking bloodline is uh, um, full of abusive women. Yes, I very much know exactly how that cycle continues. Uh, whew, getting emotional again. So, yeah, no, and as for, like, a feeling normal, um, let me, like, it's all, that stuff I didn't get growing up. That, I never, when I was in my younger teen years, um, I'm way past teen now, but when I was in my younger teen years, I dressed like a boy because I didn't want to be seen as pretty or anything like that. So, the prom stuff, I, I really don't wrap my head around. I still don't because, like, I didn't get it. I didn't do none of that crap going through high school. Um, and with foster kids, let me, let me, especially with kids who have been through, uh, been abused, let me tell you this, just to give you some pointers, it's not every child you're going to be able to hug, because a lot of children who go through that don't want to be hugged. Um, some may not even want to wear the prom dress. Um, so, and I, I don't know if this is you pulling stuff out of your butt, I really don't, I'm not trying to be mean. But you and the others involved in this Kikvik movement, uh, I'm not talking about like the Twitter users, but I'm talking about the VAs. Your stories have been mixing together, and that's not because I'm mixing stuff up. It is because they sound so darn similar with each other, the hair pulling and stuff like that. And when confronted, you guys do nothing but block. See, here's the difference. I understand it being difficult to talk about one's past. Um, as I've said in my debate with the shades um, the other night is sometimes it's hard for me to put out anything poetry wise which I haven't done for or any art pieces I actually have and I'm gonna be up front I have two art pieces that are in my server that are locked behind a door um, because I, I I'm actually kind of terrified of having those pieces out in public because it was something I needed to get out of my head uh, but at the same time it's just like I think people are gonna fucking take off and run when they see these things so I don't put them out. Um, ugh, God, I hate this shit. But anyway, um, I wanted to touch upon this because these people, like I said, I've been, I was blocked before she put this out and I can still see it. Sexual abuse, dealing with it is not very hard. And especially when it was severe, there's people who have go through that stuff for years and years and years, thankfully, I was rescued, uh, age four, uh, sorry, um, I'm having difficulties myself, um, I was rescued at age, between the ages four to five, so thankfully, um, it did not continue with me, and there are people who it goes on for years, and it can severely screw them up, and some people do go insane from that, because it is, it is, Horrific. There are stories I've read. Um, there's people who have told me things throughout the years that it's just like, oh my god. Um, and once again, as I said on Twitter, it's not good to compare scars, but there are different levels of severity when it comes to being sexually abused. Um, and there's some people who actually die from it, who could have died from it. Um, actually, a lot of people. So those are the actual survivors. As if I explain, there's victim, there's survivor, and then you can be both. Um, so I don't know what else to say. But once again, I, I, I don't know. Because these people have already been caught lying so much and the double standards, I don't know if this is a bunch of hooey. I, I don't know. And for all I know... Um, because there are people who are very extrovert, who do become very extroverted sexually, from their sexual abuse, like I said, there's different ways to cope with it. Not all healthy, mind you. Um, but there are people who have coped with it differently, who either, and I'll give you a few examples, like for me, introvert. I'm introvert, I don't want to really connect with anybody, I'm distant, so that's me. And then you have the really extroverted people who don't really see sex as anything really special important because it was used to hurt them and they will go out and they will party and they will sleep around 
and they do all kinds of things to further injure themselves, either to numb the pain. Once again, I'm not a psychiatrist. This is just stuff um, that I've read and um, some of the stories I've heard. And so those are just two examples. But yes, there are different people. There are different types of people um, who have been through that experience, who have survived that experience because of how bad it was. So I do very know uh, know very well the cycle of sexual abuse and how it can continue. Um, so don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about when I've been touched upon this stuff for years on my channel. And I, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not it just because I have I, I'm watching people who are trying to act like survivors and past victims. And look, once again, that is not a badge of honor. That is, and I'm going to say it again because I've said it two to three times already. It is disgusting. It is humiliating. It is you don't feel like a person anymore. You kind of feel like a thing. So don't. Don't sit sit here and jump down my throat when I'm watching people trying to run around like, oh, I'm a survivor. He did this. He did this. No, no. This is why I'm getting upset, and this is why I'm growing more and more angry, and this is why I'm calling more crap out because I am watching people just run around like children for whatever freaking reason and try to claim something that first off is not a badge of honor, <laughs> and second off, they're they dilute. They dilute when you people run around doing this, you guys dilute what actually happened to legitimate survivors, legitimate past victims, people like me. And it's quite infuriating because we already have a hard enough time telling our stories. So, and I've never received death threats. I've never, ah, <laughs> uh, so, and I understand that there are those people out there. Um, but at the same time, uh, I'm going to butt my tongue. I do got to get going. You guys have a good day, but yeah.